Let's take a look at how we can reassign IDs in COPS, because at first glance, it looks like it'd be pretty easy, but in all actuality, it's a little bit more difficult than it first looks. So this project file will be available on Patreon. If you'd like to grab it, you can do so on there. But let's go ahead and drop down a copnet. You can dive inside, and I'm just going to set up a quick little scene just to give us something to work with here. So I'm gonna drop down, it's called a SOP setup. It's just a recipe that I've created, it creates these three nodes for us. I'm gonna delete that last one, dive inside our SOP import here, and let's drop down a grid. I'm gonna set this to XY at the size of two by two, just to match what we have inside COPS here. So I'm gonna drop down a scatter node. I'm gonna set this Total count to like 30, change the seat around here just a little bit and lower those relax iterations. So this should work, something like that. Let's drop down an attribute randomize and we're going to give it some random P scale and we can set this to one dimensional with a min value of 0.4. Now let's make this tile. So we'll do a copy and transform. You can set this to a total number of three We'll move it over in the X uh, two because that's how big our grid is. And then let's set the second one to be two in the Y direction. And now we have this little field of points and we need to move this back into the center of our scene. So we'll do a transform with a negative two in the X and the Y values here. Now this is moved right back into the middle of our scene and we can jump out of here. Now let's drop down a stamp points wire in our points here and let's cut that wire and let's go ahead and take a look at our points. So with our stamps here, we can select this tile thing and you can see that we have this tiling seamlessly here, which is really kind of what we're looking for. But let's drop down an SDF setup, which is just another recipe that I've created that just creates these two nodes for us and we can wire this into stamp zero. So now we have some different points that are in here and we have an ID map that's being output here. So each one of these individual points has a different ID assigned to it. So we have a bunch of different random IDs, which is good for randomizing things in your materials. But if we wanted to say select a number of these different objects to maybe give a grass material to and we wanna keep the other ones uh, without a grass material, then we need a way to reassign these all to these same inputs. Uh, with, and you know, if we wanted to keep, you know, the randomness uh, the same to, to certain objects, we have to have a way to do that. Obviously, we can do it with masking, but if we want to do with IDs, if we need to reassign them for like color variation purposes, then we need to have that based off of the ID. So the way that we do this is with a statistics by ID. So we can wire this into our ID here. We can take a look at this. And if we go ahead and bring in a new pane tab type and add a composite view, we can dive in here. And it's really kind of difficult to see. This all kind of looks the same, but it is a little bit different here. So if we right click, we can select the inspect here and we can come to these different circles and we can see some different values. So if we look down here, we are outputting the area here. You can see we are seeing the color we set the area here, we can get our area uh, view. So we're outputting the area. That's what we're gonna be looking for with our statistics here for our next node. So let's look at some of these. So we have a, this circle right here, just by our, in the bottom left, you can see 0 0.0231. This one is 0 0.0118. This one's 0 0.0276. So let's come in here, let's just disable that inspect and let's drop down a compare node, wire in our area. And we said 0 0.0276 was one of them. And you can take a look at this now. So we don't have anything, that's because we need to up the tolerance here. And as we start to up this, we start to bring in some of those circles that we have elsewhere. You can see that we're maintaining the cutouts here. So we have a couple of overlapping here that I didn't necessarily notice. So yes, we have two that are overlapping here. And if we come in here, you can see that we're keeping only one of them. So maybe let's 
drop this down a little bit more just to get a few less and this should be something that is good. So we would think that maybe we'd be able to drop down a blend node and we could wire in our IDs, right? And then we could just reassign these. But the problem is it doesn't like this. If we take a look here, we get an error. And you can see it says can't convert ID to mono for BG. So we need to do something first. And what we need to do is use a node called mono to ID. And that allows us, or sorry, I said that backwards, ID to mono. And we can take this ID and pipe this in. Now we get something different here. So we have basically all the same values here. They're just in a mono channel instead of an ID. And actually, if you come in here and we take a look at our inspect, you can actually look at this. You can see that we have, well, it's not showing up here. Set this to mono. There we go. So now it's popping up. So we have in the bottom left, we have that 140, we have 120. So these are the actual ID values. If you come back and look at these, you can come to our ID. And let's see, we have 140 there, 122. You can see right above that bottom, that bottom left, you can see what our values actually are. So those are going to be our actual IDs. So let's just disable that. Come back here. So we have this set up, but we need to set up our what we selected down here. So there's a couple ways to generate IDs inside of COPS. You can do a segment by connectivity, which is going to give us basically the same thing that we had up here. It's going to create a bunch of random IDs based upon what we have in our connectivity. So if things are not connected, then they're going to be random IDs assigned to them. But if they are connected, then they're going to be the same IDs. So we don't want to use that one because we don't want to have random IDs for all of these. We want to use a segment by value. So we can wire this in and take a look. And we see that we have different values that are being assigned here. So the way that this works is we have this segment. When this is set to segments, this is going to take a 0 to 1 range, and it's going to split that in three segments. So if I set this to two, it's going to, it's going to set it to two segments. So anything from zero to 0.5 is going to be one value. 0.5 and above is going to be another value. So you can think of this sort of like a ramp. So if I take this and I set this to a constant and I take this second value to halfway along the position. So anything from zero to 0.5 in value is gonna be assigned this value of zero or this ID of zero. Anything 0.5 and above is going to be assigned the value of one or the ID of one. So we can take this and that goes the same if we add you know, more, it's gonna split that up. And so it'd be point, if we have three or if we have four, it'd be 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0.75 and then yeah yeah that's the that's the last one so 0 0.25 0 0.5 and 0.75 so by default this isn't necessarily giving us what we want we only want two segments but you see that we have some of these circles that are being lost and the reason for that we come back to our composite view and I inspect here you can see we have a value of 0 0.01 0 0.0 or 0.23 these are 0.6, so they're above 0.5. And that's why we're losing them. So if we come back to our scene view, look at our segment by value, we can take this and adjust the maximum value here, and we start to get something that it's not what we want, right? It's giving us a random value for each one of these. We want to set this from values above to extend to clamp. And now you can see with the value of one, we've lost some. If I bring this all the way down, you can see that we bring all of those back. So now we've reassigned all of these different circles that we have here, the same ID value. So we can come in here, we can do a, another ID to mono. We can wire this in. 
And now we have essentially the same thing as we have up here, but they're gonna be different values. So we need to take a constant and we need to take a blend now, wire in our ID to mono in the background and our constant into the foreground. And as long as this value, none of our IDs here are a value of one or below, then we should be fine as far as you know using our constant here. So then we're gonna use our ID to mono here to use as a mask. So now we can see that we have something going on here. If I take this constant and I really drag this down, you can see that we're getting our spheres that are being affected appropriately. So now we can come back in here and we can do a mono to ID, mark this in, and you can see that we have all of our spheres being assigned properly the way that we would like. So all of them have been reassigned the same values that we had selected down in this chain. So we can do a switch node now and do a little before and after. Oops, do a, I can grab this and wire this one into the second input or not. Oh, well, not cooperating here. All right, so we have our first input here. So this is what we've created with our selection changed and what we started with. So before, after. So you can see that we have random values here and now we've gotten rid of that randomness on just the ones that we selected. And this is fully procedural again, so we can come back in here and we can adjust this tolerance here in our compare and we can get more or we can get less, right? So we can adjust that however we want in order to get whatever we want. And we could you know, plug anything into this compare really that we wanted to, uh, but in this case, I'm just gonna use that area. Now, I do want to point out that we can't just plug in the ID to this compare, which doesn't make sense, in my opinion, because it doesn't give us an error here. If we look at this, we don't get anything here. Maybe if we, I guess if we set this to be a large value, so I guess we're pulling in some pretty large values with this. If I set this to like 50, and we said, well, those were in 100, right? So if we look at this composite view and we inspect this, comes the ID, you see like 143. So with a compare set, a comparison value of 100 and with tolerance of 50, we should encompass some of those. But again, it's just not pulling in. It's just not pulling in any of those. So I'm not really sure why that is. I don't know if that is bugged right now if that should work or if that's how it's supposed to work or if i'm just you know looking at things wrong i'm not really sure it doesn't seem to really work so we have to go this route in order to get us what we're looking for as far as reassigning those ids so hopefully this has helped you out like i said it is a little bit of a roundabout way but it does work and this is some good information to know anyways the statistics and stuff uh, the different segmentation there's also a second setting to this. I'm not going to go over that right now, um, but there is more to this segment by value node. So there's some different options for how you go about actually selecting things. So that is a interesting little node and it's good to know that that exists as well. So anyways, hopefully this has helped you out. If you want to grab this project file, like I said, it, it will be available on Patreon so you can grab it on there. It is free to uh, become a member on Patreon. There are paid tiers so you can jump in those if you're interested and get some project files You get the project file and some other stuff um, if you want to. So got some stuff coming with that as well as far as Patreon goes. So look uh, forward to that. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.